It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. That phrase, you have heard it a hundred times. But today, I want you to feel it. Not as a slogan, not as a warning, but as a reality. When the inevitable incident hits, will your team panic or perform? Will your tools fight back or freeze? Will your mind go blank or will your training kick in? Welcome to the Alentia Effect. I'm your host, Shirin, and this is not just another podcast. This is a strategy session, a simulation, a mindset shift. Today, we step into one of the most critical and most mismanaged zones of cybersecurity, incident response. Imagine this, 2 a.m., a critical alert flashes, but no one sees it. Not for three hours. By then, credentials are gone. Lateral movement is complete. The exfiltration has already happened. Let's make sure that is not your story. Because in a game of response, you don't win with gear. You win with grit. Let's get one thing straight. Having a SIEM doesn't mean you have a response plan. That's one of the most dangerous illusions in modern cybersecurity. You have bought the tools, SIEM, EDR, UBA, SOAR, threat intelligence feeds. But here is what actually happens when the breach comes. There is no triage playbook. No one knows who is in charge. No one escalates. And worst of all, no one takes ownership. You think your SIM will save you? That is like thinking a fire alarm puts out the flames. It doesn't. It just screams. And in that chaos, people freeze. Maybe the alert is real, maybe it's not, maybe it's a false positive. So someone auto-assigns a ticket and then forgets about it. Let me paint the skin. The alert is generated, the ticket is created, it's labeled low priority. It sits, no one investigates. And that's how real incidents get missed. Not because of complexity, but because of silence. Tools detect, people decide. The Alentia effect quits. Don't confuse automation with action. Detection without response is like seeing the storm and standing still. Now, let's break it down. The anatomy of incident response. There are six universal phases. Miss one and you open the door wide for damage. One, detection. Something triggers, a log anomaly. A user reports something strange. Maybe a system throws a flag. This is the spark, but what happened next defines your fate. Two, triage. Is it real? Is it a false positive? What's the scope? If you get this wrong, you either overreact or worse, ignore a live attack. Three, containment. You have confirmed it's real. Now stop the bleeding. Isolate the system, kill access, break lateral movement. But do it carefully, because if you panic, you may destroy your own evidence. 
4. Eradication Find the root Kill it at the source Malware Stolen credentials Rogue process If you just restart the system The attacker might restart with it 5. Recovery Rebuild, restore, monitor But validate first Because if your backup is infected You're only restoring compromise 6. Post incident Here is where most organizations fall silent But this is where you get stronger If you actually document lessons Update defenses and close the loop now here is the truth every one of these phases needs a defined owner a playbook a timeline without them you are winging it let me give you a real world chain reaction triage was delayed because no one knew who to call containment was done by unplugging the server and that killed critical forensic evidence recovery was rushed and they restored from an infected backup what starts as a two hours issue turned into a three week disaster each phase is a minefield without clarity you multiply damage incident response isn't just a checklist it's choreography and in real time that dance better be flawless when mitre released its 11 soc strategies one stood out like a red flag in the fog strategy number five prioritize incident response not tools not dashboards response here is what mitre is really saying Incident response must be a core function, not an afterthought. You need to test your response like you'd run a fire drill, because theory dies in crisis. You must define roles across people, process, and technology. And you absolutely need custom playbooks for different environments, cloud, mobile, OT. Think about that last point. You can't use the same playbook for a Kubernetes cluster and an ATM network. That's not response, that's Daniel. The response plan is your true resilience test, not your tools, not your alerts. Because in the heat of an incident, the fancy tech doesn't matter if no one knows what to do. Let me give you a metaphor. Incident response is like martial arts. In a real fight, you don't think about your next move. You don't say, let me open the PDF and read a step two. You react because you have trained. Response is muscle memory, discipline, reputation. So ask yourself this, when was the last time your team ran a live IR drill? When did you last change your playbooks to reflect today's infrastructure? If your answer is never, then when the attackers make their move, you won't be ready to make yours. What if I told you that every incident is a game and the attackers they are not just using tools they are using a strategy welcome to the game theory lens here is how it plays out you you are the blue team them they are the red team and every move you make or don't make shifts the board this is a sequential game under pressure. Not all information is visible. Not all signals are true. Sequential moves and imperfect information. You don't see everything. They know that. 
so they probe. They test your lugs, your silence, your slow reactions. Every delay gives the attacker a move. Every silence gives them confidence. Commitment strategy. Game theorists call this deterrence through pre-commitment. If you've built a reputation for acting fast, attackers think twice because your reaction time becomes a defense of its own. You are not just responding, you are shaping their decision. The payoff matrix of inaction. Let's put it in a game terms. You, delay in incident respond. Attacker, continue attack. Outcome, total compromise. You, triage fast attackers pivot stiltly outcome limited exposure you public escalation attacker retreat outcome damage control you ignore alert attacker exfiltrate and outcome silent breach even in action is a move often the worst one Reputation and repeated games. Don't think of attacks as isolated. Every breach is part of a repeated game. Adversaries watch how you've played before. They learn your delays, your weakened response patterns, your internal chaos. And they use it all to win the next round. Here is the truth. In every incident, the real game isn't in the alert. It's in the decision tree that follows. Tools don't play games. People do. Let's get real. It's easy to talk a strategy when nothing is burning. But the war room, that's where strategy becomes survival. And I have seen both sides. Let me give you two stories, two real organizations, two very different outcomes. Story one, the organization that did it right. They weren't perfect, but they were prepared. They ran quarterly incident response simulations, fire drill style. Every team had a role, triage, forensics, PR, executive, liaison. Incident commanders were assigned by shift. One night, they got hit. Lateral movement was detected on a dev server. Within seven minutes, they identified it, contained it, launched forensics. By sunrise, the only thing left to do was update the playbook. Story number two, the organization that failed. This one hurts because it didn't have to end that way. They had a response plan, 300 pages long, stored in SharePoint, locked behind 2FA. At 3 a.m., no one had access to it. No one knew who had escalation authority. No one wanted to wake the wrong person. So the attacker just kept going. For four weeks, they moved silently. For four weeks. When they were finally detected, the damage was irreversible. Now, here is my personal lesson. I've been in that war room. I've stared at screens, heart pounding, trying to remember who to call first. And I will tell you what I wish I had. A printed run book on paper next to my computer. A whiteboard war map of critical assets. A chain of command I didn't have to second guess. Because when everything goes sideways, 
in a crisis no one reads policy they follow muscle memory and if you haven't trained that memory you are fighting blind so far we've talked about what goes wrong let's end by talking about how to make it go right because your incident response won't magically work when chaos hits you have to train for it like a team like at least like warriors and that starts with building incident response muscle memory here is how you do it run tabletop exercise quarterly not annually not when we have time every quarter run scenarios role play attacks debrief what broke assign incident commanders per shift at all hours someone must be clearly in charge if it happens at 2 a.m the team should already know who leads keep printed run books always accessible assume this you are locked out of the internet sharepoint is down can your team still act maintain a 24 hours response map know who's online who's reachable and who covers gaps across all time zones map your critical assets you can't protect what you don't know map the top 10 most business critical systems and know exactly how to isolate them in a breach have decision trees for legal pr and ceo you don't want to be asking should we tell the media mid breach build decision logic in advance know when to escalate to whom and with what evidence you can respond to chaos with confusion you need choreography because when that alert goes off your team doesn't have time to think they need to move together like dancers who've rehearsed like a team that's been here before the bridge will come not maybe not if when the attackers will test your defenses they will prop your processes they will bank on your delays but in that moment it's not your detection tools that define you it's your response will you hesitate or lead will your team freeze or flow in the end your incident response isn't just a technical function it's the difference between disaster and resilience between noise and narrative between we got breached and we fought back this is the lnti effect like and subscribe if you like train your mind like your team and respond like it's already happening and like always stay secure this is the Alentia effect stay informed